Hey, everybody. Okay, and can I just get a, a thumbs up if the candidates' mics are on as well? Hello. Hello? Okay, yes. All right. Okay, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to our debate. My name is Laura Zeglin, and I'm the chair of the community group Options for Davenport. We are a grassroots organization run 100% by volunteers, so thank you very much to all the volunteers and help make tonight's event possible. And I wanted to extend my thanks as well to all the Davenport candidates, or Davenport residents, who submitted questions to our candidates for tonight. We are really overwhelmed with the number of questions and also the level of detail of the questions that came in. Um, ours is definitely a very engaged and uh, informed writing. So it was very difficult for us to choose the questions. We had to distill it down to just four big questions. Um, so if your question um, is not one that's being addressed tonight, um, we do encourage you to hang around afterwards. Our candidates, I think, will stay around maybe for about 20 minutes, half an hour after the debate, the debate is over um, to, to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so before we, we officially begin, I would like to acknowledge that we're situated upon traditional territories. The territories include the Wendat, the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, <coughs> and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations. The treaty that was signed for this particular parcel of land is collectively referred to as the Toronto Purchase and applies to lands east of Brandon's Line to Woodbine Avenue and north towards New York Gift. I also recognize the enduring presence of Aboriginal peoples on this land. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand it over to the moderator of tonight's debate, Dave Fadini. Dave is the editor-in-chief of the West End Phoenix, a monthly nonprofit community newspaper. The West End Phoenix is devoted to telling the stories of a diverse, compelling, and quickly evolving catchment, from Christie Pitts to Babby Point, from Parkdale to the Junction Triangle. We're very grateful to have Dave join us here tonight. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Thanks for coming, great turnout, uh, and a beautiful night, and thanks for you guys for showing up. Um, so the theme is a transportation-focused questions. Um, I'll ask you guys a question, and we'll, everybody will have a chance to answer in different orders as well. Um, did you explain about the wild cards? Are we supposed to explain about the... I say you give, give like, the rules one more time. Okay, I go over the rules one more time. So everybody has two minutes to speak, and um, each candidate has two uh, wild cards where they can they can raise it and and uh, sort of like or if they want to um, uh, interject their opinions about uh, something that one of the other candidates has said. So it's kind of like a game show, which I think is thrilling <laughs> um, and fun. And uh, our friend in the front row has a has a time has time card, so we'll make sure we hold you guys to the two minutes. Um, and I know for a couple of you guys, it's the first time being involved in something like this, so it's yeah. it'll be a journey for all of us. We're gonna try to get this done in under an hour. Um, uh, I think that's it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be great. So um, I'll introduce the candidates just in case. Um, the name cards aren't obvious to you, but um, we have Federico Sanchez here, so to my immediate right. Um, next to him, Christina Martins. And that's Kirsten Snyder next to her, and then Martin Stiles at the end. So it's great to have uh, everybody representing you. Showing up is half the battle. It's incredible. Um, and thanks to New Horizons as well for having us here. Um, this will be, all right, we're going to jump right in. Um, uh, all right, the first question is um, the concerns of Metro Links. It's the province's regional transit agency for the greater uh, Toronto and Hamilton area. Um, it's been given a lot of lip service lately um, about its plans surrounding uh, electrifying the GO train network for 2025 as part of its regional express rail plan. Um, in Davenport, in particular, numerous, numerous rail lines carrying diesel trains run through our riding and train service of all types has only been increasing in years and it will increase as we move um, into, into the future in our catchment, in our neighborhoods, which are changing before our very eyes. Um, this two questions, you could address either of them or fold them into one. Where does your party stand on plans to electrify the GO Transit network? And what will you, as our representative in Davenport, advocate to the provincial government regarding plans for electrification? And we're going to start with Christine Martins. 
Uh, well, thank you very much for the question. And, and you can use the microphone to your great. So thank you very much for the question, and uh, thank you to New Horizons for hosting and Options for Davenport for organizing tonight's debate. And uh, uh, first of all, just to, with regards to uh, transportation and the investments that our province has made, we have uh, made investment over over $190 billion in infrastructure over the last uh, 13 years, $5.3 billion for the Eglinton Crosstown, which crosses at the north end of the riding, as well as 12 new boat stations, and as well as GO Regional Express Rail, $13.5 billion. And part of the commitment of Regional Express Rail, the $13.5 billion, is to electrify. So I think that uh, most of the people in the room here tonight have been at many of the Metrolinx meetings that have been held here in the riding, and I've heard Metrolinx time and time again commit to the fact that they will be electrifying all GO lines across the, the, the GO, GO corridor with priority to uh, the Union Express, as well as the Barrier Line. So as the MPP for, for Davenport, that's what I've been advocating for, to make sure that those are the lines that are first electrified. And uh, we are on track to electrify to 2025. We have a procurement that has gone out already. We have a commitment in our budget that speaks to the fact that we're going to be electrifying these lines. Uh, as well as um, an environmental assessment that is already underway to uh, have the uh, electrification of the GO line. So 100% commitment to electrifying the lines by 2025. Great, thank you. So uh, I'd like you to pass the microphone to your back. Yes, and Fed is going to go next. I'd like to thank uh, Options for Davenport uh, with the, for the opportunity to speak on these important issues for Davenport. I'm personally committed to the electrification of uh, transit. I've been riding an electric bicycle for over two years now, and I just uh, purchased an EV electric vehicle. I'm personally committed to electrification. Um, this is not a promise, it's something that I truly believe in and live with daily. For this reason, when I'm at Queen's Park, I'll be predisposed to canvassing for electrification of all transportation, of public transportation. I'm also a, man, a person of science, um, medicine is my profession, which involves identifying issues, proper diagnoses, and evidence-based solutions. Obviously, I'm more comfortable discussing healthcare issues, but I will bring this approach to all issues that I face in Queen's Park. Um, and uh, I will fully explore the option of electrification. As long as I, it is the most feasible and financially sound solution, then I will support it, and I do believe that it is the most feasible and financially sound solution. Downport is currently surrounded by diesel trains, Electrification of all Metrolinx rail is very important to Davenport for many reasons, including noise, vibration, and most importantly, pollution. Um, we've been giving only vague promises about electrification, and uh, the start date continues to be pushed back. Currently, the pro promise, as you heard, was 2025 by Metrolinx, but uh, I find this rather hard to believe considering how the UP Express was supposed to be electrified by 2017, and there's no evidence that this has been implemented. I believe in electrification, sincerely, and uh, of transit, and I believe that that is in your best interest, and I will always support the best interests of the people of Davenport. Okay, so we'll move down to Merritt. Um, all right, thank you. And first of all, apologies if I'm a little husky tonight, because I, I lost my voice about 24 hours ago, but it's back again, so. Um, anyways, first of all, I want to join the others here in thanking Options for Davenport for organizing this, and it's amazing to look around the room and see so many of the fantastic advocates from our community that have been working so hard on these issues over the years. Look, uh, the NDP has had a very long time commitment to electrification of rail. Our party's vision that's currently in our platform, which we're calling Change for the Better, is really a move forward after what has been 15 years of flip-flopping and backtracking around electrification. And so in line with some of the new Democrats that came before me, um, who pushed for train electrification here in Davenport, we are currently completely committed to working to electrify the GO network and the UP Express as soon as possible. You know, um, we have been waiting years, years, uh, to end the noise and the air pollution of the diesel trains that currently go through our communities, not to mention the increased number of trains that are coming. We were promised by this government uh, electrification of the UP Express by 2017, and we're still waiting. You know, even though the former medical officer of health back in 2009 um, expressed public health concerns about the diesel trains. 
Now we're hearing some rumors, and I've actually had to confirm that the liberals are putting a hydrogen-powered pilot in their RFQ, I, I, you know, the metro links. And I, I have to ask myself, why? <laughs> to replace the electric trains that have not yet replaced the diesel trains? Um, in the last provincial election, the Conservatives promised to scrap plans for GO train electrification, and now Doug Ford is saying he's going to make six million in cuts and he's going to spend all this money on subways, but he won't say where he's going to get that money from. The NDP wants commuters to keep moving, but we also want to make Davenport a more livable community, and that includes making it more livable for the people who walk and ride bikes, etc. Thank you. Great. Uh, Christina wants, yeah, you, you let, can you... Let, let her speak and I'll use it after. Okay, sure. Um, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, again, as everyone has done already, I would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, as a new candidate, it's been really fascinating for me to um, get to know all these stakeholders and um, get to know the really vocal community members. There's been so much planning um, around um, making uh, the Berry Corridor better for you, and I'm really receptive to uh, all your suggestions. Thank you. Um, I want to start by pointing out that 32% uh, of greenhouse gas emissions have come from transit, and $11 billion is lost annually due to gridlock. Combine this with the reality that the populations of the GTA are exploding. We need transit alternatives now. Electrified rail provides faster and more reliable transportation and um, it's important to get those commuters off the road. Um, being able to promise a half an hour transportation line from Barry to Union I think is the type of attraction that we need. But to make the, ba the Barry corridor fully reliable we need to electrify rapidly and simultaneously with its uh, operation date. We've seen what promised electrification has amounted to with the UP Express, and converting electric, diesel to electric has proven costly, um, laying new tracks, adding um, uh, electric lines on top, and bringing in brand new trains has meant that that process has been delayed. And so I'm advocating that we um, electrify at the moment of operation to ease and make sure that that transi transition happens um, immediately. Thank you. Um, okay, Christina, you have one minute to, to provide. Okay, so I just want to comment on a couple of things. So I'm glad that Christian and. Uh, oh, sorry, you have to use your mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I thought my voice was protected. So I it does sound good, your voice. Don't one wrong, minute, but. sorry. So, first of all, I want to start, uh, thank Kristen and uh, you know the fact that she's online in terms of ensuring that we're getting cars off the road, that the economic impact that there that exists when we have cars just stalling, the pollution that that is created when these cars are just stalling, and that it's important that we get commuters off the road, we get families home to their babies. Um, and uh, it's interesting. I just want to comment here on what uh, the colleague here to the to my left said that uh, he would. Uh, he agrees on electrification as long as it is feasible. So we already know that his leader, his, his uh, Doug Ford, has already been commenting on the fact that he needs to, uh, he's committing to billions of dollars of cut in health, education, and I'm sure that transit will be one of them, and electrification, you can bet, will probably be the first thing that he's, he's not going to invest in, because for him, it might not be feasible. And, you know, I, I'm glad that the NDP are on board, that they think electrification is extremely important. I just wish that their party would have voted for it when the Liberal Party had it in the budget and they chose not to vote for it and it's nowhere, nowhere in their platform this year or last year or the year before. Okay, thank you. Um, any other wild cards we played in this round? All right, great. Oh, a late wild card? Did you pull up your sign? Okay, great. Kirsten, um, give one minute. Yeah, so I recently read the um, latest Metrolix report and um, despite Christina Martin saying that all the lines will be electrified, not all of them are promised to be and they're actually going to do mixed diesel and electrification and one of those lines is the Kitchener line. So while yes, the Berry Corridor is expected to be electrified, it's wrong to point out that all of the onboard projects are under that same uh, trajectory. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. We all get a sense about how this is supposed to work now, which is great. And uh, when you're using the microphone, get nice and tight to it as well so you can, we can hear you. Um, question two. As part of expansion of regional commuter rail services, the province has approved a number of new GO stations. 
uh, including the two new stations in Davenport, one at Eglinton near Caledonia, um, and one at Bloor near Lansdowne, not too far from here. Um, again, two part question. Uh, where does your party stand on these proposed stations? Uh, assuming construction for these stations moves ahead, uh, what will you advocate for your priorities for the station? And how do you propose to advocate for these stations? And we're going to start this time with Kirsten. Thank you. Um, so actually, I recently um, had to go to the Bloor Lansdowne station to take the up to go to Kitchener-Waterloo because there was no um, direct route for me to get there on a Sunday morning. And I also couldn't bike there because there's no place for me to lock my bike or safely assume storage for a day trip out of the city. And um, I just want to also point out that for me to get there, I took the TTC, paid to get, again to take the UP Express, and then paid a third time to take a bus from, the Pier from Pearson to Kitchener. And I think for this grand vision of transportation to be successful, we really need a single pay user system. It's unnecessary for me to have to make those um, extra steps and not know if I have to carry my carry cash or if there's going to be someone with a debit card. Because if we're really seeking um, full integration between local and regional transportation, it only makes sense that I that um, the system would understand. Uh, I pay once and I tap off when I get to Kitchener Waterloo, and we can make those charges accordingly. Um, additionally, I want to advocate for um, bike storage. Um, I know that it's coming at Bloor and Lansdowne, but I want to point out that that station has been there for a couple years now, and it makes no sense why these things can't happen simultaneously. Um, especially if what we're trying to do is um, make people use regional and local transportation. I, I don't understand why coming south of Bloor is not feasible for me to bike to my nearest bike station. Thank you. Uh, Mary, you're going to go next and we're going to come back down to this end of the table. Okay, well, um, I mean, I, I support what we've achieved thus far. I think we can do even better. Um, in the past, like, 15 years, 15 years, um, we, you as a community, have been forced to jump through a lot of hoops just to find out what's being planned for our community. Um, but when it's time for you to share your feedback and your ideas, um, whether it's on the proposed changes to the transit or big development projects, it seems like the other side of the table is being kind of empty. Um, and that's not okay. So I want to say very clearly that as your MPP, I will build back the public trust and the confidence in regional transit planning. We need to bring back transparency and accountability at Metrolinx, and we need to make sure that the regional transit plans are based on sound policy, evidence, research, and community input instead of what I think has been political interference. We need regional transit planning done in conjunction with development proposals for better integration of community planning and to avoid the types of, frankly, traffic congestion that we've seen plaguing other parts of our, of our city. Um, and I think we need to collaborate.